In the last video, I designed and built a simple memory register for my computer, completing the main four subsystems that I need to make a functioning machine. In order to tie all of those together, I need to build a main bus. Bus architectures in modern computers are quite complicated, involving sophisticated control circuitry and traffic management systems to prevent devices from talking over one another. But at its most basic, a computer bus is just a bunch of parallel wires, connected to various devices in the computer, with each wire representing one bit. The devices connected to the bus are trusted to know when and when not to use it, so as not to conflict with each other. This design is very limited, but it's sufficient for the relatively simple machine that I'm building. I'm going to build a simple PCB to implement the main bus. In addition, it'll also serve as a status monitor, allowing me to view the current state of the bus, as well as a number of other control lines in the computer. The main bus consists of 12 rows of 16 header pins, divided into groups of four to make it easier to see how things are plugged in. Each column of pins is connected by a trace on the board, so any two wires plugged into the same column become spliced together. The board also has some smaller buses on the right. The MUX bus is used to bus the three selection bits for my multiplexer boards. Since all the multiplexers need to have their select inputs in parallel, bussing them here is more convenient than splicing a bunch of wires together. On the far right are three smaller buses for the control line signals on each of my three main registers, A, B, and C. For the status monitor portion, I've decided to use these small Piranha form factor LEDs. The two leads on each of the left and right sides of the square are connected, with the cathode side indicated by a notch in one corner. I like these LEDs because they are nice and bright and easy to arrange into arbitrary grids on a breadboard or PCB. They're a lot more versatile than the LED strips I've been using for various tests, since I can arrange them in any number I want. On the PCB, the four groups of four LEDs in the top portion of the status area will show the state of the main bus. The three in the lower left show the state of the MUX bus, and the six LEDs in the lower right will show the state of the control lines for the A, B, and C registers. Finally, the lone LED on the bottom right corner is a power indicator.
I've also designed a register monitor board that will allow the computer to display the values currently held in each of the three main registers. This board also allows me to fix a serious design flaw. You may remember from the last video that I designed the registers with a set of bus interface relays, so that the register latches can only be connected to the main bus at the correct time. But in order to see the values stored in the register when it's not connected to the main bus, I need some way to get the signals directly from the latches without going through the bus interface. That's important not just for the register monitors, but also because of how I intend to build the CPU. The main bus is 16 bits wide, but I'm going to represent it here with four lines to keep the diagrams manageable. Each of the three 16-bit registers is connected to the main bus via its bus interface. To keep the CPU design simple, I decided that the A and B registers would be wired directly into the A and B inputs of the ALU. A more sophisticated design might use multiplexers here to allow different registers to be routed to different places. But I wanted to keep my design as simple as possible. As soon as values are loaded into the A and B registers, the ALU will calculate all the arithmetic and logic functions in parallel. All seven of those results, 16 bits each, are separate inputs into the MUX. The MUX select bits are used to choose which ALU function we actually want to use. The multiplexer output is then connected to the main bus, where the result can be stored in register C. To help accomplish that, the register monitor has a small 16-bit busing section which will provide connections for the A and B registers to be wired directly into the ALU. This is not the main bus, it's a separate private bus for each register. If I had been thinking ahead when I built my register boards, I would have included additional output pins connected directly to the latches that bypass the main bus interface. But since I didn't do that, I'll have to break out the old bodge wire and solder it directly to the relay terminals on the latches.
With all the components now assembled, I can use the Arduino to run a simple test program that actually makes use of two registers. Here's the Arduino code that I'll use for the test. First, I define 16 pins that I'll use to write to the main bus. Then I define four more pins for the bus interface and reset inputs of the two registers. The pulse function is used for operating control lines. It takes a pin number as input and sets it high, then waits 200 milliseconds, then sets the pin low again. The main portion of the program defines a loop counter and a boolean which I'll use to decide which register to write to. The loop counts up in increments of 45. Each bit of the counter is written to the main bus. Then it decides which register to use to store the value, and the appropriate reset and bus interface lines are pulsed to latch in the value. I now have a working main bus and register monitoring system, as well as a busing solution for my internal register signals. In the next video, I'll start the process of assembling the full CPU, and begin testing programs that make use of the adder, logic block, and multiplexer. Until then, thanks for watching.